Yeah, definitely. Uh, really exciting. Uh, been a good probably 10 days now we've been in camp together, so awesome to be back with some of the guys. Coming off your blinding season for the Brumbies, have you got any indication whether you're playing fullback this weekend? Nah, not sure yet. I think uh, maybe some of you guys might have the scoop, I don't know. So it's keeping everyone on edge, uh, Yeah, on edge is probably a good way to describe it. It's uh, new for everyone, so um, yeah, plenty of new faces in and some old faces that have come back to the setup, so it's exciting. Yes, um, I'll just on that Super Rugby form, um, what do you think just brought the best out of your game in 24 of the Brumbies? Who did or what uh, did? What, what was Adrian? You did different this year or what did you put down to? Um, maybe, maybe the dad strength. That's what Khan's telling me anyway. So um, I don't know. Yeah, like disappointment obviously. They run quick to ask about that, but um, probably didn't change a whole lot apart from just the extra body in the house at home. So. Um, now Bernie was really good, obviously, and um, sort of, you know, steering me back, um, back into confidence early. Got got a full preseason, um, so yeah, nothing like drastically changed physically or anything for me. Just not like your own career best form now. Uh, hard for me to like for me to judge my own career best form, but I feel confident nonetheless. Um, but like, you know, to. Pe- back to the Super Rugby, it's like we get all the way to that and then that final hurdle and you know, for personally part of a team, you obviously want to go to that next one, so it's hard to judge um, when we sort of keep getting to that you know, same point, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Your strengths are, you know, you're attacking player, what, what's Joe sort of said to you or any other coaching staff about, I guess, finding that balance between risk and reward, um, and what's added to that? Uh, yeah, it probably hasn't had to be too much told, like definitely a conversation um, in and around uh, you know, there's no, no secret to the, the success he's had when he's coached, um, you know, o- other sides um, outside of Australia. So, um, trying to obviously get a team or a squad to buy into that sort of um, style of play is a little bit different to what we've seen uh, here previously. Um, but like getting everyone on board um, is probably the easy part. It's just being able to like sort of gel that together. Um, so, you know, trying to form a few different combinations or guys trying to form those combinations to get in the 23. Uh, he's definitely put like a little bit of a uh, uh, like a roving license in and around the game. Uh, a lot of emphasis on um, being able to link with our our bigger guys, um, trying to play a little bit tighter, give give ourselves a little bit more room on the edges. But you know, Wales might listen, so I don't want to tell you everything. <laughs> what if, what if you um, three, four, five years of test footing behind you now? What have you learned during that time since you made your debut? Yeah, it's a roller coaster. Um, yeah, high highs, low lows, but I'm trying to find that happy medium. Obviously, um, you're coming up against the best of the best always. So, um, you know, I don't think anyone sort of right, like rides highs and lows of preparation, or you know, prepares better for others or whatever. But trying to make sure that that consistency is there, I guess, is probably the one that I've seen over the few years. And just having the, the child in your life, how does how has that kind of changed in terms of probably later the evenings and do you able to kind of switch off from rugby these days easier? What's it like? Yeah, yeah, have to switch off. Yeah, I'm trying to give her the puree at nights. That's probably a pretty, pretty hard part of my day. Um, but you know, touch wood, we're pretty lucky at home, and, and Bront does a lot of the, the heavy lifting during the day and getting in the routine. So um, definitely, uh, like smile coming home after a, what, what can be a tough day, or you know, we were pretty lucky through the season. We didn't have too many crappy games, but. Um, yeah, like coming through the door, drop the bag, and uh, yeah, it's pretty much the best part of your day coming home, mate. What about leadership? Um, you took on a fair bit more responsibility for Brumbies this year. Do you think that can also help from a chess perspective coming back into this environment? Yeah, potentially. Um, see how we go, but uh, I think it would maybe just naturally sort of fell into that. Obviously, being there a few years at the Brumbies now, and um, you know, guys come and go, and it's part of the game, but. Um, naturally just trying to uh, give a little bit of voice and uh, moving to the back obviously um, probably don't want to hear too much from a winger sometimes but um, you know when you're a bit closer to the action or as I said yeah, with a few year, extra years under your belt probably a uh, bit, be- bit better of a view of the game and what you can give and uh, what you can see. What do you make of all these performances in Sydney of late and being a Sydney boy how can you be playing um, from a yeah, I think uh, it's important for the team um, to really to really show out and, and sort of make Sydney 
uh, feel like a really big home game again. I know obviously Brisbane uh, in the past has felt like probably the biggest home game for, for the Wallabies team. Um, but as a kid growing up here, being able to get to Wallabies games sort of at, at, at the Allianz, or the old Allianz, but you know, now it's all jazzed up and new. Uh, I think it's like a real big opportunity to, to win back or uh, to create a little bit more of an atmosphere probably for the Wallabies there. Sydney hasn't been the happiest hunting ground for, for Wallabies of late, but does this feel like home in some respects coming back? Yeah, it does. Um, I also grew up here in Sydney, out west, so um, I've got a lot of friends and, and family here, and as well as a lot of memories as um, my journey started here as well. So um, Sydney's a, a big part of, um, of rugby here in Australia, and um, like Roddy said, we want to make it a fortress here. Um, and it starts this weekend, essentially, so um, to do that, you've got to win games, and Hopefully we'll do that on Saturday. What kind of momentum you've been out of the following three years, isn't it? Last last test match, um, so you, are there times we thought that might be that part of your career done with the international team? Nah, not at all. Um, I knew that um, in that time of my career back in 2021, um, I needed a change. Um, I spent a big part of my all of my career up in Queensland, and I got to the point where um, I needed a change and, and needed to. Um, you know, do a bit of soul searching and overseas was um, was the place for that um, so I left knowing um, that I was going to come back at, at some stage um, probably not as quick as it probably happened but I knew that if I had gone away and, and, and worked and chipped away on my craft that coming back I would be a better player for it and um, knew that if I had done all, all the right things that um, I could put myself in the in the right spot to potentially be back here what did that clip you um, getting out of your comfort zone? Like what, what made you a better player? Well, similar to Roddy, um, you know, had a family, um, got two kids now with, with my partner. So um, I think just in life in general, it's made me a better person, um, and that flows on to being a better player. So um, as well as you know, going overseas and um, experiencing um, new things and, and learning more about the game, and <coughs> having spent eight years of my life in Queensland at the Reds I only knew what I knew so going overseas and um, seeing um, things through different lenses and different perspectives um, helps you grow and um, yeah, it was so beneficial for myself and as well as uh, for my family. Just on Northampton, um, is there anyone in particular that you just sort of learnt a bit more of a craft about that sort of game of rugby and just you know, improving your own skills? Uh, yeah, I've been asked this question um, probably every interview I've had since I've been back. Um, probably the name I can't look past is Courtney Laws. Um, I think his game speaks for itself and um, him as a person, I think it's um, he was a massive influence in the short time that I spent over there. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a short answer. And just being back here in Wallaby camp, having you know, gone overseas, so seeing the sort of team squad sort of develop over the time, do you, does it make you sort of appreciate moments like this a bit more? Yeah, it does. Um, especially being a bit more older and a bit more mature, I think it's it's something that I've definitely <laughs> haven't taken for granted. That's <laughs> So yeah, definitely has, and I'm, I'm just taking each day as it comes, and um, yeah, it's good to be back with boys that I've um, got a lot of time for and have played a lot of, a lot of rugby with in the past, so uh, it's good to be back, and um, hopefully I can make my time uh, this time around um, better. Luke, I guess the, uh, the injury you were out at Super for the second half, can you tell us a little bit more about that injury and, and you keep you going this weekend? Yes, yeah, so I just broke my foot. Um, that's probably Nellis' fault for just throwing me up in the air and not bringing me back down. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, broke my foot essentially and um, yeah, fit and ready to go. Uh, is it, you know, you kind of, there's a few players from Melbourne that are in a little bit of a flux around their future. That's been the whole season for the Rebels players, but are we any closer to knowing where you're going to end up and, and does that just linger in the background as a distraction or are you okay with it? Nah, I'm right where my feet is, and that's here in Wallaby camp, and that's what I'm focused on. Um, but yeah, th once I have an answer, I could probably give you a bit more clarity on that. Um, but you know, you never know. NBA is a pretty cool sport to get into. So. Huh. Just, just Sydney's home, wild cards, obviously an option. All options are, are open at the moment, but um, I, yeah, I can't really give you an answer at the minute. Um, yeah. The two of you um, got together this month, and both of you were this set last year um, in the World Cup. Luke, you were back in Australia eligible. Um, is it, you know, missing out, how frustrating or 
group sitting on the sidelines watching on, probably thinking that you'd be able to contribute to it? Yeah, uh, probably as frustrating as the rest of the nation. Like it was just, it was disappointing. It was sad. Um, from a, from a friend and teammates' perspective, more so uh, those those first two emotions. Uh, and you know that, that's the game though. Uh, I was we a number of us that are here now were on tour, still playing, and you know we were uh, you know being held there and uh, as you know next cab off the rank. Uh, but yeah. I think we've been chatting about it for ages now, so like, at some point we've got to try and let it go and just try to focus on like the next little bit, I reckon. But to answer your question, yeah, sad, disappointing. Was it nice that so many have come back that weren't in the squad so that you almost, like, with such a big group of you that you're not necessarily carrying in those, like, you know, the scars of last year? Uh, yep. There's yeah, definitely a part of that. I think the, ex the most exciting part is the coaching staff have just picked um, a group of guys who have out and out performed this year um, for all their sides like whether they missed out or they were in I think go upstairs and like walk through the group and, and find me someone that um, didn't perform this year and, and doesn't deserve their spot up in the squad at the moment so there'd be there's a massive part of that that is uh, probably got the coach's selection um, like a few headaches going on because everyone's performed um, like I know he sat out for a while but like front runner before he hurt himself you know so um, I think, yeah, that's probably the most exciting part for me. Tom, where do you think Wales are at at the moment? Like, Aussie fans would remember they came early on and see a big win from them and mm. see this week that Australia are actually heavy favourites. So where do you think they are positioned and what's gone on since the World Cup? Yeah, 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 it's a funny one. Like, you, you know, you get, most people might have just go peer at their, you know, the scoreline against South Africa and think, oh, probably, you know, like you said, heavy favourites this week or whatever that looks like for the, the gold jersey. But... Um, they play a brand of footy that uh, is probably going to be really exciting. They move the ball a lot more than people are going to assume. Um, you know, like a dry track over, uh, for their game against South Africa on the weekend. And uh, Africa were able to shut down a fair bit of their attack, but their intent was there to move the ball around. So, like, we're sort of assuming that that's going to come as well. So, um, someone, like, stopped the rain this week, and that might be, you know, turn on a pretty good spectacle, I dare say. Tom, what do you make of the likes of um, Mark and Carter being snapped up so quickly by rugby league? Um, like, what do I think of them going to the game? Or uh, yeah, I think that's exciting for those guys. Obviously, Carter was in a similar boat to what was asked about some of those Rebels players. Um, so, for someone trying to decide their future, like you got to look after yourself. I think he's got the skill set to um, to transition to the game really well and. Um, I can't see him doing anything except going really well, man. I think he's got the pass kick run, uh, which we saw a fair bit of last year in the test. So, um, yeah, well, exciting opportunity. And like Mark's a no-brainer, obviously, big athletic guy, fit into the Chook system probably to a T, and probably see nothing, nothing too dissimilar there. I reckon. The Raiders have suggested they might play the Saint Bombers. Have you thought about uh, going back one day? And, and do you think, like in general, rugby players are looking at the league a little bit more than what they have? Uh, hmm. Probably not. Like I think it's like it's awesome media hype, and I get all that stuff. And um, you're just saying the Raiders said something. Like uh, I think for the guys in Melbourne, like there was obviously you know as said Carter's ones come up, but uh, I don't think too many like maybe slips at best. But that's that's probably about it. I think he talks about himself playing seven for the Raiders sometimes. But um, man, like when we're here, everyone's just flat out trying to get in the 23 here. No worrying too much about. Trying to fit in at lock at, at the Raiders or maybe this guy, but that's about it. Maybe this guy's going to the Raiders, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> about your own future, Luke. I'm um, pretty tough here at the Rebels, obviously. So, um, yeah, what's in store for you? Not sure yet. Um, still trying to sort it out. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm just here focused on, on trying to earn a spot in the team this week and uh, performing well. So, um, yeah, who knows? I might try and get a gig in the NRL. Hey, nice is it harder playing in Sydney? Like it's, it's, the test record in Sydney is not very great, but eight years. Um, what is it about Sydney that sometimes the results don't always go? Yeah, that's a good question. I didn't know it was eight years. Um, don't know. I think the last two tests I've played in Sydney might have been South Africa at, Alli at Allianz and, oh, pardon me, Argentina last year and then South Africa, the one prior to that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think. 
probably just comes down to preparation. I wouldn't put Sydney down as a location that throws guys out massively. I think it's probably just, as I said before, high highs when we're winning and then it's obviously you fall off a cliff and, you know, soul searching when we lose like a lot of teams do, but it's trying to bridge that gap between our best of our best and probably our, you know, our worst performances. Maybe it's just by chance, but I think I've only played maybe three three tests in Sydney before. Maybe SCG as well, yeah. Um, yeah, can't give you an answer. Sorry, like as in why Sydney might be. You guys have well and truly moved on from the World Cup. New coach, new group. What do you need to do here? Or what are you trying to do on Saturday as a statement to the Australian rugby public? I'll answer that. Um, I think Joe, the first thing Joe did was bring a group together um, and come in and say, like, it's not about him, you know, reinventing the wheel within five minutes. Like I said, we've been together 10 days. Um, obviously, some it's a Australian-only group. Obviously, there's some pretty high-caliber players that, um, you know, walk-ons in the past into the team, and, and rightly so. Um, but they're not included at the moment for us. So uh, there's an awesome opportunity for guys in positions to, to step up into that arena, uh, whether it's guys that have been there or not. But... Joe's sort of given um, given that challenge to, to a few positions. Uh, they're obviously up for grabs. Um, a few of us still waiting, obviously. Uh, but I think, obviously, the, the opportunity to, to turn the tides, obviously, like you said, Rugby World Cup was disappointing. Um, but, like, game at a time, we can't look, be looking three, you know, this is a three-test series or whatever it is in July, but, you know, win this one, win the next one, win the one after that, but there's no point looking at the next two. Uh, he's brought a coaching staff from here, there and everywhere who have um, got respect from all their different angles. Laurie obviously being you know, one of the goats of Australian rugby coaching. Uh, Mike's come from where, you know, there's Jeff from Melbourne and um, you know, we've got the coaching staff there to give us everything we need as players. So I think that's exciting for, for us. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it.